Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Well, guys, I tried to uh, make a copy of this scenario with the uh, AP-158 instead. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I don't know why, but I decided to try changing other trains to the AP version as well. And for some reason, the scenario, when I went to uh, play it after saving it, told me that there were problems with a couple trains, and I felt, you know what, it's not worth trying to figure it out. I'm just going to go ahead and play it as is. So what I've done instead is I've gone ahead and done something that I've been holding off doing. Uh, I went ahead and installed the AP Weather Pack. And I was going to try and do it as a partial installation so I could show you the core assets on multiple routes as I still come across them on their vanilla play. But after doing some more research, I realized that the changes that once made, unless I go to change the folders around and put the original ones back in, they're otherwise permanent. So I really have no way to do a partial install that I found after some uh, poking around unless I uninstall and uh, delete certain files to show off those routes as originally designed and it's gonna be a pain to have to do that all the time so I decided to just go ahead and install the weather pack we've seen 30 routes by now we've seen enough of the default weather let's go ahead and look at the weather in a much better format whether I'm gonna get the uh, upcoming Armstrong powerhouse version 2 of the weather and uh, sky pack that remains to be seen but for right now let's look at some uh, better weather starting today so this is the debut on the channel of the uh weather pack the sky and weather pack and we're going to see that from now on where applicable i'll have to see if i can put it on some other routes like workshop routes as well as time goes on southland to brighton apparently already has it though i'm told but in any case uh let's get into the waiting for freight scenario this is our last class 158 scenario and then we're going to move on to well something else we'll uh figure that out later anyway i already know what it's going to be but i'll tell you about it later in any case, uh, here we go, waiting for freight. You are driving a routine express passenger run from Manchester Oxford Road. However, a slow running priority freight train could cause problems for Warrington. Let's go. A high priority freight train is running on the line ahead. This could potentially affect your timetable from Warrington onwards, so take extra care. Fantastic, just what I'd like to see. So let's get all quiet. A lot of passengers to board here at Manchester Oxford Road before continuing to Liverpool. You notice I moved the uh, view up there again because this train's broken. Be quiet. Now we have a red signal. I'm going to go ahead and move the train ahead a little bit just to get it a little closer to the uh, end of the platform. And that'll do nicely for my purpose. So now we'll open the doors. And let's watch a train that's going to eventually be coming in in a moment. Or actually, it's going to be a moment before I can even do that because the train's not in view yet. There it is. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do some slow movement here. Emphasis on slow movement. So two and a half is definitely enough for right now. They get the green signal because of the way train simulator works. And the signal will eventually change over as the track clears. So there we go. We are on our way, leaving Manchester Oxford Road at a 15 mile per hour speed limit. Our first stop today is Birchwood. This is a very unique stop for us. We don't usually stop at Birchwood, uh, but today's itinerary does do that. Apparently this is a routine service. We've never seen any stops between Warrington Central and uh, Trafford Park yet. We have of course seen Deansgate and uh, Manchester Oxford Road, of course Manchester Piccadilly, uh, but we haven't seen any of these other stations in between on that line. So this is a first for us. We're going to be going from Birchwood to Warrington Central to Liverpool South Parkway to Liverpool Lime Street. So again, notice we're skipping Hunts Cross and uh, what else? Hunts Cross, Witness and them. They're being skipped as well in that area. So a little interesting uh, bit for today's service. Now we are going to be speeding on this little area ahead, I know that because, or we're going to pick up speed rather. I know we're going to be doing that, so I'm not going to worry too much about gaining speed right now. How's the weather look, guys? Does it look better? I'll have to compare my uh, videos and see how uh, different they look. It's set now, I'm, getting, I'm on V1 now. I'm on the sky and weather pack now. Now they did. Now Armstrong Powerhouse did has been releasing teaser screenshots for the last few weeks now about uh, new images, uh, or I should say images of new weather form patterns and such in their V2 of the uh, Sky and Weather Pack. But they 
posted an update on their Facebook saying that the Sky and Weather Pack is not going to be, they're not going to be backwards compatible. So if you have uh, scenarios from version 2, they might not work properly in version 1, which I would expect. But apparently if you have version um, 2, you might have problems loading scenarios from version 1, or at least having the weather, like the scenarios will work because it's typically an aesthetic thing. But any weird triggers or scripting relate that does weather changes, that might not work properly. So the scenario will still work, but the weather will just look really odd in some cases, unless you decide to reprogram the weather yourself to whatever you can do in version one. That means you'd have to reprogram every single scenario yourself in terms of how you want the weather to work, find the weather triggers and change them. Um, and that that is going to be a pain for people who go back to play the uh, scenarios that were released in uh with version one of the sky and weather pack so i might have to um get in the habit of just playing in terms of uh scenarios that um are custom scenarios not in the workshop but other custom scenarios like on uk train sim again closing in august of 20 uh 23 unfortunately for, at this point and any scenarios that i've already downloaded from uk train sim such as that 46 scenario pack on the freeware west coast mainline south uh, things like that, um, I would still be able to play right now with my current configuration. Plus, the scenarios now have all weather and such that is in the scenario. I don't have any random weather condition anymore as a result of having that pack installed. So I'm not going to be uh, relegated to random weather. Uh, the downside of this is that, um, let's say new scenarios get made in a few weeks that have the new weather. I'm going to have a hard time, obviously with weather patterns than those. They might not even, they won't work properly in terms of weather formats. So they're gonna be talk about, oh, we're going through a really, really uh, hazy rainstorm here. Um, it's bright and sunny out, what are you talking about? And that's how it would work if you don't have the weather pack installed on a scenario that requires the current weather pack. It's the same setup. If you go to a scenario that requires something from the weather pack for weather aspects, you're gonna get random weather. And I suspect it's going to be the same with V2 and V1 because the scripting's not going to work properly. A rainstorm might continue when you should be in the sun, for example. So I'm going to have to see uh, how some of these um, V2 weather pack scenarios are set up. If certain things are done that require that pack, it's going to require, obviously, some... Um, it's going to make me, make me think about whether I need V2 of the pack, but I also have to make sure if I do get V2 of the Sky and Weather pack, then I'm going to have to be able to swap them back and forth. So I'm already creating... Uh, I already created a folder with the original files. That's already set up, just in case I have some other kind of weird problems. So I can go back to the original files if I need to. Uh, there's a train over there, by the way. That's the 47207 Intermodal train. That's coming from the uh, yard that we pat that I didn't point out correctly in the last scenario from Manchester Victor. Uh, Manchester um, football stadium. Something forgot the name of it. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's coming from the yard beyond Manchester's Oxford or Manchester's football stadium. So that's coming from the yard there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how the new weather pack changes how things work. And I hope that there is going to be some backwards compatibility offered. Because while a year from now it may be irrelevant and everyone will be looking at the current weather pack at that time, uh, and by then there's hope there will hopefully be a sale on the upgrades so people who hold back and get on the get in the upgrade too, unless it's like a three pound thing, then it wouldn't be a big deal. But if it's like ten pounds, oh god, for an update to the pack, seriously. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what they decide to do. Um, I assume that existing purchasers of the pack will be able to just pay for an upgrade and. Uh, Therefore, because of that, it will literally be irrelevant. And we can just uh, swap back and forth. We can swap in the V1 weather if we need to for something. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on the um, on it to see what exactly is um, changed and has to be swapped back and forth. That said, I did have reservations about installing the entire pack at once because I didn't want to install things for roots that I don't have, but then I realized as I go through the dummy install I created, hey, I'm only missing one item here. It's the original North Wales Coastal. I literally have everything else on my install, so every single route covered by the weather pack, I think I have. Uh, so I can just go ahead and do whatever I want with it now, which is kind of funny. It really is kind of funny. 
Now, U.S. routes are not covered by it. So when I go to Horseshoe Curve or Feather River Canyon or those, uh, and, or back to Sherman Hill, they're going to be on regular weather. I know there is a way you can put the uh, AP weather on there, but uh, it would involve having to create, possibly even rename the files, not just create the uh, folder with uh, the files, but rename them. By the way, while I'm just gabbing here, I have a achievement for here, there, and everywhere. That is our mileage achievement for this uh, route. So we're in good shape for uh, that now. That achievement has been gained. So here, there, and everywhere, I have gained. So I have been here, there, and everywhere. I'm currently angling to be a little late, by the way, according to this timing. I was not expecting this. So I'm going to go ahead and punch this back up, and we're going to see if we can get the... Uh, we can save some time here. I should be able to save some time because I know you can do that easily on this route. But I need to get into the 80s to do that. And we're coming to an uphill gradient right now of some form. So I'm going to uh, work to try to regain some time. And I should still be on time. I should not be late. But you never know what's going to happen in this game. Get back up to 100% here. No, I'm still losing time. I'm a little I'm a little curious why I'm losing time on this scenario. We're coming to a downhill gradient anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and hold my speed where I am right now because I am going to be gaining speed anyway. In fact, I need to stop at 85%, I've decided. We're crossing the Erlim Viaduct here. There used to be a... Uh, I think this is where a train route used to be underneath alongside the track on one side. Or alongside the river on one side. Train going by. That was uh, num unit number 799 of its model. I think it was another 158. We are being warned about, I think, a fifth. I think I remember this last time. See that sign that said 15? That's what we were being warned about. It is not relevant to us. We're going to disregard it. We're on a downhill gradient. You're gaining a little bit of speed. In fact, I want to make sure I hold my speed properly for that. We're still losing time. I don't know why. We're four miles from our stop. We are going about four miles every three minutes. So we are literally pushing time right now. We, like, Without question, there is a possibility we could be late for this stop. So I am now questioning whether the timing in set up in this scenario is accurate. So this is going to be what I call a high speed stop when we get to uh, Birchwood. We're going to be screeching the train to a halt and hoping that we, that we hit. Yeah, I'm in the uh, 84 to 85 range, and I am losing time. So yeah, there is a problem with the uh, timing setup on this stop, apparently. We're going to be dropping to 75 up ahead, but I'm going to have to push this. And Actually, no, I'm not, because the station's right there. So I'm not pushing anything. This is going to be a fun stop, guys. We're literally going to be pushing this one a lot more than I'm used to.
Let's hope this one's on time, guys. I don't think it's going to be. Can I get stopped in time? That is the only question for me now. Am I going to stop in time? Let's get the doors open as soon as I stop. I think I'm late, guys, but arrival at Birchwood, platform two. I'm still on time, apparently. Uh, did I read that time wrong? No, I think it was 25. Yeah. Uh, departing Birchwood. Our next stop is Warrington Central. We are already late for Warrington Central, apparently. That's not good. But that's starting to reduce already. We're only three miles... We are only three miles from Warrington Central, so if we can get some speed quickly, we should be okay. Of course, a class 158 and the word quickly don't usually line up well with each other. There is a 65 mile per hour blip up ahead. We know this from previous scenarios. Then goes back up to 75. I may have to use those uh, that extra space today. We'll see. Two and a half miles to go to our stop. A little less than that, actually. And if we're assuming two and a half minutes, which we're almost at that point, then uh, we may be in good position again. We'll see. We're going to be a little over 60 now, so that'll give us some improvement anyway. Thank you. We're getting a... Uh, that is a single yellow. I do not like that. I do not like that at all. I'm keeping an eye up ahead just in case. I have no repeater or anything to tell me anything, so I'm a little perturbed by this. That is a red. That is a green. Well, that was good to see. about something up here probably the speed change yep 40 not gonna affect us we're stopping at the station anyway we should be a little bit better for our stop this time because we're, at a, we're coming in uh, I think at a better pace right now for our stop We're getting yellow, so it's a red at the end of the platform. We can't push this. So that train must have been on our track. 158723 must have been in our immediate needed area here. We're going to go ahead and inch forward a little more here because I have space. 
and time on my side right now. We have a yellow now, but we're going to stop anyway at this point. Because now this is effectively our stopping time. An arrival at Warrington Central Platform 2. Biting my nails on this one, guys. Leaving Warrington Central. We'll fix our window again. Our next stop is Liverpool South Parkway. And we are working on a yellow signal, so we are going to need to keep this in mind. Our arrival time at Liverpool South Parkway, which is a little less than 13 miles away, is not expected until 1649. So we actually have 17 minutes to do this. Which is probably going to tell us everything we need to know about the 85 speed limit up ahead. We're not going to be using that very much. I'm going to just stay here at 32 and a half for a moment until I see what's going on up ahead. Because the signal up ahead is the one I need to keep an eye on right now and see what happens with it. If the signals stay yellow on us, then we're going to have to consider going at a slower speed through the entire... Uh, area up ahead until we do see a green. So I'm going to ignore that 50 for now. Let's just zoom ahead a little bit and get a look at this. Uh, that is a red signal. That is definitely a red signal. Get it down to about 10. That's a crawling speed right now. We got a green. Never mind this 10 garbage. We have uh, at least two signal blocks clear up ahead, so we're going to resume normal operation and make our way up to line speed at this time. But we did not have to come to a complete stop, which is definitely ideal. Looking at that up ahead, that that's a strange dome effect on the sky in my window up ahead here. I don't know what's going on with that. Is that my imagination? Anyway, we had a green signal, so we can move our way up to 85. I am going to do that now, unless I see a yellow, in which case I'll dial it back. That's a yellow. <laughs> Well, I said I would dial it back, didn't I? And we got 15 minutes to go 10 miles. You can see how this is going to go. It doesn't take uh, rocket scientists to know how this is going to proceed. We're going to be under the speed limit the whole way. I mean, 15 miles in 10 minutes, you're going a uh, third of a mile every third second, every 30 seconds. That's basically the pace you're going. Stick it around 40 and you're good to go, apparently. Somewhere in that range. Which is what I just went down to right now until I see what happens with the signal up ahead. And it's a blind signal, so I'm going to slow down a little bit more here. That's a red. Is there a train up there? There is. 158712 is coming. 
Now we have a green. I just went to release the brakes to coast into the red, but now we have a green. So we are good to proceed at this time. We will zoom our view back to normal. So we know we're going to be clear for at least another signal block. We can take our speed to at least 60 for right now. At least. It's a huge signal block. There can be benefits for installing additional signals in this block train, people. Less train slowage. There's the next signal up ahead, which is the one I'm going to be paying attention to at this time. Need to know what that signal says, and I'll govern my speed based on that. I now have 12 minutes to go 9 miles. We'll see how this goes. 45 is now a speed I must kind of work with here. I'm well above that right now. We have a random yellow here. Okay. These kind of signals are really annoying, guys. <laughs> These are the really annoying type of signals. I think I'm just going to have to pick a speed that I feel comfortable with within uh, timing restrictions and go with it. Otherwise, we're going to lose way too much time. Zooming ahead again. So clearly getting over 60 is not going to help us very much in this scenario. Not much is very evident. That looks like a red up ahead, so I better react to that. That is a green up ahead. I better react to that. So as you can see, by the time we reach close to the signal, we're actually approaching uh, reasonable, um, reasonably within the 50 mile per hour range. So I'm gonna actually stick to 50 to 55 miles per hour for right now. That seems to me to be a safe range to work with. Ten minutes now to go seven and a half miles. So yeah, we want to be a little over forty-five, but not quite uh, at sixty. So fifty-two and a half—that's a good speed, right? Decision made. Let's park it here, or keep going. That works too. Or keep going. That works too. Okay, let's stop here. We're going to have another mystery signal coming up here, I believe. It should be yellow when we reach that.
Not so worrying for yellow. I'm going to bring the speed down to 45 this time, but I'm going to just kind of leave it there for a moment. And as we zoom cut close to this signal, I'm going to zoom in and see uh, what this signal says. I don't want to drop before 45, below 45 if I don't have to, but we'll check the signal before we make that call. We do have a downhill grading here I have to keep an eye on. So peeking ahead again, that is a red. So 52 and a half is apparently still too fast for my uh, planning here, which is unfortunate. It's gonna turn green as soon as I get to 30, isn't it? That's what's gonna happen. Not this time. Okay, we've actually crossed into the section a red signal is governing right now with the AWS ramp. So we are where we should be at this point. But should I be going slower and therefore able to pass the signal faster? That I don't know. We're going to have to come to a stop, I've decided. Stopping will be necessary here. Yep, there it is. We're stopped right now. Oh, well. We're going to have to wait. You stupid little piece of crap. <laughs> you stupid little piece of crap. HC83, die. Well, ladies and gentlemen, slower speed is rewarded on this journey. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Slower speed is rewarded on this journey. Until you get to the next signal, then you get screwed. Where are we right now? I couldn't read that sign. I'm going to actually check the map on this one. Uh, that's where I'm going. That's where I am. We just left through, went through Howe Green. Once again, I'm going to hold my speed right here. This is still a good pace for right now, so I'm going to hold this pace for the moment, for the time being. I figure we're going to have one more yellow signal to contend with, and then one more as we get to the platform. Let's check how far we have to go from uh, Liver from uh, Liverpool to, to uh, Liverpool to Liverpool again. I forget the exact uh, timing, but you see we're a little little less than four miles here. Oh, that's not going to work. Uh, nine miles. So yeah, five mile difference there. Can I zoom in? No, I can't. Now I can. Thank you. Funny how that works. Yeah, when you have you can't. Oh, interesting. When you have the uh, F1 HUD up, you cannot actually zoom in on your train at all. I find that interesting. Okay. So I'm expecting a yellow any second now. If we don't get a yellow, I'm cranking it. I'm not cranking it. 
I will uh, maintain 50, though. Oh, we're green now. Well, that changed in a hurry, didn't it? Cranking it. So now I'm going too slow, apparently. That's definitely not something I like to see right now. So we do see that lovely 30 up ahead. I'm assuming we're going to be green at this point because I don't see how we're going to be able to make our timing if we're not green at this point. Oh, we have flashing. Okay, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be clear at this point if we're getting flashing. Down to 30 is going to be mandatory, though. We are on time. The timing is still good. I think this is Hunts Cross right here. We had, I think we saw the third track. Yeah, there's the third track over there. So it's definitely Hunts Cross. Just making sure the brakes still work. We're a little over two minutes from having to make our stop completely. We're a little over a mile away. We're going to have to go down to 30, so that's really going to slow us down. Hey, train. 158762 is over there. I'm starting to bring the speed down now. We do have a yellow, of course, with a feather junction indicator. That is expected. Gonna leave it at 40 for a moment or close to it. Down to 30 in time. We drop down to 20 for the next uh, speed indication up ahead. Now we're pushing our time. That last signal that turned uh, green before we got to the uh, advance warning signal, uh, that's going to come back to bite me at this point. So I have to uh, try to push as much time as I can right now, save some time. On a standard scenario, it would mean I would fail the scenario if I didn't. We're now under the 20 limit. I should be able to go within the uh, third of the mile that I need to go in order to get to the platform stop, however, in time. So I should be okay. Here comes the West Coast main line that we're joining. Guys, I am right on time. One second off. Arrival at Liverpool South Parkway. Liverpool South Parkway. Our next and final stop will be Liverpool Lime Street. We have to be there in 12 minutes. We only have five miles to go. We're leaving an 80 mile per hour speed limit.
There are junction lines here that we are not taking. You can see them moving over to the West Coast mainline tracks that came in. You can see we're getting green signals now, so it looks like we should be okay the rest of the way. Our ETA is also showing that we're literally going to be one second late right now. That's worrying. Another class 158 over there. I don't really care what number it is now. <laughs> 30 mile per hour section coming up. Sorry, I leaned a little closer to my mic there for a second. If you want, I can lean even closer. So I've been trying to get a look at some of the uh, sky shots. I'm trying to get some more sky shots in the uh, images during my stops here. I hope the uh, weather change is showing through here. I will now be very interested in what a thunderstorm looks like. I might have to go back and play that fourth scenario just to see what a thunderstorm looks like with the uh, weather pack. We are now three miles in change, three and a quarter miles from Liverpool Lime Street. We're going to be... Dropping our speed dramatically in a moment. I'm happy with my speed right now. I should not have hit the brakes yet. Because we have a green signal. Why are we braking for green signal? Oh, speed limit. Notice the west, the other tracks sitting over on the right now, or on the left now. I didn't even notice those tracks were sitting over there. I think they're just yard tracks now. One rejoining us. Now I'm definitely gonna put the brakes on a little bit because I am coming a little too fast. I feel like I'm coming now. I'm not too fast. I was too fast. Now I'm doing good. more there we go it's gonna be dropping to 25 in a moment so we're gonna keep our eye on our speed and the 30 is now in effect Gonna be rejoining the chat boss group coming up here. We have a little downhill here. Let's watch ourselves here. Bring it down to 29 just to make sure I don't break the speed. And it's actually a pretty steepish downhill. Of course, I know that. So we're gonna measure against it here. Our ETA has not changed one second since we left uh, Liverpool South Parkway. So I'm actually thinking there's a train in the station that is blocking our access right now. Our gradient has smoothed out. We still have green signal up ahead. I am going to bring our speed down to 25. There is, again, a downhill gradient up ahead as well that we're going to have to mind ourselves on. That'll do nicely for now. 25.1. Barely speeding when we come into this area. Not discernible. And the 25 is down effect as we take the junction. We're probably going to get moved back up to 30 again. 
So I'm not going to really worry about moving myself up to that because I'm going to get increased on the um, downhill up ahead anyway. Is that a yellow? That is a yellow. That's mildly annoying. Is this a double yellow? We will monitor. It just, like I said, it just means there's a train in our platform. Or something like that. We're going to platform number two. So let's actually uh, take a quick peek at platform number two up ahead. If we look at platform number two, well, there's a train coming out of platform one we're going to have to wait for. It might be platform. Th yeah, that actually is platform two, I think. Let's check that again, shall we? No, platform two is the one in between the trains. So someone's going to probably be leaving, and that's what we're waiting for. So we now have a single yellow, and I am expecting a red at this point. We, ha we don't, don't have to be at our stop for five minutes, so it's definitely acceptable. Notice that, see, again, the platform, the track is not set for us. We're not allowed to proceed at all. So the 15 up ahead means absolutely nothing to us right now because we can't even get to that 15 anyway. So I'm just going to take my speed down to 15 right now a little early. Now, if I see a train pass me, that's a good sign that our signal is probably cleared. So I don't mind going slower because I can speed up when I see a train pass me. But I can clearly see the red up ahead now anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I don't uh, overexert myself here. Right now, the track is being sent for, to uh, two or three. I'm not sure which. But if I, obviously, the uh, track beyond the... Um, junction where we're going to have to cross which is set against us anyway so we would crunch ourselves on it the track beyond that is um going to be changed to the track to our right anyway probably is that the train up ahead coming at us no that's just a light at the end of the tunnel okay i thought that was turned off for budget reasons but okay So much for calling to a stop. We're gaining speed on this downhill. We're going to have to keep this brake on the entire time here. Okay. I'm going to have to stop. Our second full stop of the scenario, and this one might take a while, guys. So, uh... Get cozy and enjoy. Back in the cab of the class 158, you see we have our platform two indicator for our stop. That is a correct indication. Our task is taking us there. So that train we were waiting for was unit number 786 right there. Now I've actually gone ahead and uh, retaken this uh, cut. I'm gonna be admit this right now. So you're not gonna see the here, there, and everywhere goal that I completed uh, because I decided to retake this cut. I did not have the cleanest cut into the uh, cab that I decide to uh, remove and not air. So I just retook it to get a better cut in here. So we are going to see a nice professional drive into uh, Liverpool Lime Street at this point. At least as professional as my amateur self can do it.
So 15 is now our effective limit for the rest of the way. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more speed on because we are not gaining or losing at this point. So I might as well take advantage of every second I can. 15.1, not good enough. 15.4, not good enough. 15.6, now that's more like it. Now we're not going to be able to pull all the way to the buffer on this one because if we do, we're going to be late. And of course, we're not judged by the time we arrive. We're judged by the time we open the doors. Because, you know, that's logical. Actually, it might make it all the way to the buffer. And by the way, that train on platform one is there. That is a uh, not doing anything. Yeah, we are going to get almost all the way to the buffer. Look at this. We're actually going to pull right into the buffer. Wow. That'll do. Right on time, right at the buffer, Liverpool Lime Street, platform two. Let's look at our train as we finish. That is the literal fastest I think I've ever pulled into a buffer on any route, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, didn't even uh, pay attention to the fact the buffer was coming. I just looked up all of a sudden. Oh, hello. I need to stop now. What did that man just do? Was that Clark Kent? I swear he just flew away. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's the end of the... Uh, hello, ma'am. Goodbye, ma'am. Well done. You have made it to Liverpool without too much disruption. My mind is blown on what these people are doing. I swear that person flew away. I swear I saw that. Let's just go to the score, shall we? And... I was two seconds late, apparently. Okay, I'm going to just redo that on my own, guys, because uh, I literally did put a save right by that last signal, so I can just cruise right in and um, knock that out. So apparently the final achievement, wait, has now been completed. What does wait do? I will tell you in just a second. Wait basically means I completed the scenario with no penalties. So that's what the zero means. It means no penalties, apparently, which is an interesting way to look at it. I've never seen an icon with a zero on it before, so that's kind of fun. Uh, zero penalties. Uh, I'm going to just have to redo it to get the uh, last two points on there because, you know, that's going to bother me if I don't. Even though I got a gold star, that's going to bother me. That that eight on my experience total is going to bother me if I don't fix that. That is just going to bother me. Maybe I have a little low CD in me. I don't know. But in any case, I will fix that. And uh, I will get that last two points because it's quick and easy to do. In the meantime, what are we going to do next time? Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're going to do next time is um, actually something that I kind of have reservations doing but i thought you know what i have to be fair i have to show it off we're gonna take a look at it uh, i've gone ahead and set my uh, next route to be back on suburban glasgow a route that i've been wanting to revisit but we don't have a lot of content for it i don't want to pay you know 15 pounds for a four scenario pack on the river website that's like not just a waste of money in my opinion that's way too much for one scenario that's a lot of credit for one scenario um, but we are going to be going to the Airdrie extension. Um, I got a promotional copy because I want to take a look at it and try to find out if it is actually worth the value. Would it be something I would get at half price, for example, in, in a normal scenario, in a normal situation? That is what we're going to analyze next time because I've actually been looking through the uh, files, the AP file, and I've noticed something interesting that I'm going to talk about, if I remember that is, but something interesting that I'm going to talk about when we start playing this on Friday, I'm going to give the first couple scenarios a play on Friday, but I'm going to also look at getting the freeware version of uh, the Suburban Glasgow route, which includes Airdrie, which includes Cumbernauld, which includes the entire route up to uh, to um, Malague, up the West Somerset, which includes the path all the way to Carlisle down the West Coast Main Line. I'm going to look into getting that version of the route installed because there's something very interesting I want to show you on that route which we will get to 
in uh, the future. But I'm going to see if I can get that working because I do have the workshop version of Root, which has been gone since 2020, on my in my library somewhere. And I have a huge library, so um, I, I, Windows is the, my Windows download folder is challenging me for. Um, sanity because it doesn't want to load half the time because my downloads folder is so big then i have to probably empty out some of my downloads folder now in order to uh, make this thing work because i've got so many files in there <clears throat> sorry sorry windows didn't mean to offend you but i'm going to um need to bring that up to look at scenario a scenario or two on that as well because i've been wanting to do that i found some scenarios for the freeware version of the route at uk train sim and also at alan thompson sim from 2019 so we are going to be taking a look at that version as well. The main thing I want to do is I want to compare the Airdrie extension and the full root that we have on Steam at the moment to the full root that exists on the original workshop version. There's something interesting about that I think we're going to find. I haven't taken a look yet, but I think we're going to find something interesting. In any case, we'll stay just stay tuned for that next time. We'll talk about the Airdrie extension next time. I'm Cycle. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, you're part of the world. I will see you next time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. We are going to be going to Airdrie. Uh, I'll see you for that. Bye-bye.